Good day. Welcome to Endurance Room. In yesterday's video, doing the update on our garden and the longhouse, I was talking about how dry it was, but right after I filmed that and uploaded it, we had crazy amounts of rain. It rained, it rained last night, so awesome. The forest is good and wet today, and I thought, what better time than to come out and practice some fire making? But to add a little twist to it, I thought we would do it with one stick. This is a challenge that has been going around for a while in the outdoors bushcraft community, and I thought we'd give it a go today, considering that the weather is less than optimal. I'm gonna set up a quick camp, and then we'll get after it. So just a basic plow point configuration using a bipod. The front is lashed off. Right at the top and is staked down on either side of the bipod which suspends the bipod and gives the shelter a good deal of stability. We're not talking about the shelter today so much as building that one stick fire. So let's collect some resources and get at it. In the area that I live in, Northwest Pennsylvania, my go-to for starting starting a fire with, you know, a ferro rod or a bow drill or any primitive means is tulip poplar, simply because it's a one-stop shop for getting your fire going. The bark lends itself to making a really amazing bird's nest. You can break it up and have super fine, medium, and coarse materials, all just from the bark. Elm is a close second. The bark has similar qualities. They're both very soft woods, so for getting your fire going, it just, it combusts better. The harder woods, like maple, oak, they're better for sustaining the fire throughout the night. But initially, when you're just getting it going, you want the softer woods. Tulip poplar in particularly grows pretty fast. Long, tall, straight trunk. And the leaves, as you can see, they're similar to maple, but slightly different. It looks like the tip of the maple leaf is bit off. Here's the bark. You want to be able to identify the wood in both you know summer conditions winter conditions you may not have the leaves so you want to pay attention to the, the other attributes uh, here's some elm take a look at that real quick it's similar but a little different the leaves are altogether different they grow in a cluster that kind of fans out Here's a piece of tulip poplar. When it dies and, and dries out, it's an off-white color. It's very light. But the bark, it's got long fibers throughout that run the length of it. So you can pull it off in long strips. Here's another example. This is tulip poplar. You can see how light the wood is. But the bark, the bark on this example is pretty far gone and soaking wet. I picked a good day to do this. <laughs> but this is worth noting. You want to practice this stuff in less than ideal conditions. When, when you're comfortable, when you don't necessarily need it. Oh, fresh buck sign. That's about 3 8 half inch in diameter. That's a pretty healthy buck. Ideally, what I like to show you guys is one piece of wood with the bark intact that I'm able to build my bird's nest and then split it down into smalls and kindling to get the fire going and sustaining. 
Here's something. This may be as good as we're gonna get today, guys. It's up off the ground. There's still some bark intact. And the wood is dry. This is very damp to the touch. Ideally, we need a little bit more. A little bit more. You wanna have about a softball size bird's nest to get your fire started. That'll give you enough initial combustional combustible material to you know get your smalls ignited so you can get the fire sustaining this is this is about a baseball we need about a softball Wet, wet, wet. It's soaked. Let's see what we can do. But this is looking pretty good. All right, let's get this process down and then we'll split this up while we're waiting for this to dry. Just approaching a camp. The Palaka is directly ahead. This, so this is the Czechoslovakian marsh camo plosh Palaka. This is pretty cool, but it's really hard to compete with the original. All right, so we've got our one stick, and we've got our extremely wet bark for our tinder bundle. First things first, we're going to process this down and hopefully see if we can get it to dry out some. You can hear how wet this is. <laughs> Not optimal. But, if I get enough of this water wrung out of it and separate these fibers, we may be able to get something going. Really all we need is some time, a little air, and we can dry this out, you know, in an hour. I just finished separating everything. It's all the stuff that I initially started with, it's already drying out to the touch. It's damp, but it's way better than it was. Let's get this guy processed down and hopefully we'll get this going. So I just took about three hours to let the tinder bundle dry out. I've got it wrapped up in here. I aired it out, spread it out really fine, and then I put it in some dry cloth. And you can tell just by, by the color that it's now much drier. So this should readily take a spark. I had processed our original stick down earlier but it didn't record, so I'll just do that real quick for you. I had made some feather sticks. You've all seen that to death a million times. I won't do it over. But to get our smalls and kindling, I'll just split this down with my knife. <laughs> Tried doing that with maple or oak. So after it's in there, Twist the handle of your knife and pop it open, which is worth knowing. Here's all the material from our one stick. We've got some feathered sticks. This will serve as the smalls to initially get burning. Some medium sized and some larger material. 
and then here's our bark all dried out. It's much lighter in color. It should readily take a spark. I'm gonna make a quick fire lay with the larger sticks, laying some flat, and then I'm forming a V. Let it get some air. And there you have a one stick fire. It wasn't necessarily easy, but as you can see, it is possible to get a fire with one stick, even in suboptimal conditions. It just took some time. I hope you guys enjoyed, maybe learned something. I know I did, it was an awesome challenge. Uh, real quick before we go, I just wanna say congratulations to Peter Stomper. He is a fellow YouTube bushcrafter and he just graduated from the Pathfinder School's intermediate class. I believe he said it was the most challenging experience he'd ever undertaken, and I would agree. Those patches are not given, they're definitely earned. So congratulations, dude, well deserved. He hit me up last year after I had my experience at the Pathfinder School. I posted a couple of videos talking about my time there, and he reached out last year, and he stayed with the journey and, and saw it through. I think he's going to the advanced class in a few months, so best of luck there. With that, I would like to tag Pooter with a one stick fire challenge. I'd also like to tag my buddy Andrew from Drew's Adventures. He just started his channel, check him out. Jake from Clearly Canadian, and Jim from Primal Wonder. Let's see what you guys can do. It doesn't have to be in rainy wet conditions, anything like that, just you know, one stick and get a fire going. So thanks a lot, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.